This is Kim Meyer, host of Choose to Rise. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Hello, my friend. I hope you're doing well. It's Julianne Condia, the host of Rewritten. I cannot believe we are in the final countdown to 2021. I am excited. (laughs) This year has been one of grit. This year has been one of uncertainty. I think that there's always a silver lining. My friend said and asked this question once and said, if this pandemic were to last for the rest of our lives, what would be the silver lining? I just love that. I love that perspective. I love that thought process. And so that's something that I'm searching for in 2020 is the silver lining and the blessings and acknowledging the hard and knowing that the hard makes us. We don't always understand it. It can be insanely painful. I've had to watch some friends walk through the unthinkable And that has been so painful. And I just, it's hard to imagine that life can be happening for us when it feels like it's happening to us at times. And I just think that perspective gives us hope when we realize that there's always a silver lining. There's always a lesson. There's always a reflection. may not feel good and it may not be one you want to take responsibility for right now just because you might be in the midst of your pain. But wow, I can't help but think that time only can tell us exactly what that silver lining, blessing, lesson, all the things have been. So friend, let's get ready for 2021. I just did a vision board workshop with a team that I lead. I've been leading them for years. And it's a team that I dreamed up when I first began my business almost seven years ago. It's been six and a half years. It's a community that I dreamed and prayed for. And it is just taken day by day and year by year to get to where we are. And it's just a joy of my life. It is something that I've poured into. It's hard to call what I do a job because I love it so much. It's literally the dream job, but it's more the dream lifestyle. And I'm just so thankful and honored to walk hand in hand with these people in life and dream big and take action and work on ourselves each day. These are people who see more. These are people who want more. These are people who want to intentionally live fulfilled each day. And so for the past six plus years, we've been doing a vision board workshop every December, which is so crazy. And we build these dream boards, these vision boards, these life boards for that next year. The cool part about this is that it's just your tool. It's something that you have around. It's a physical thing to look at and remind you of where you're going. It's so important to reflect on where you've been and who you were. And for me, that was an overworked, burnt out, underpaid teacher who thought debt was a way of life, who had a gym membership and never went, someone who drank a lot, someone who knew that deep down she was made for more but didn't know what. She thought that the only way to earn more and have more was to go back to school and get farther into debt. She was exhausted. She was tired. She loved her job, though. She gave it her all. And this opportunity came along. She joined for the community. And then her dreams got bigger. They got bigger than a 35-pound weight loss in a healthy way. It got bigger than having an incredible community that showed up daily. It just got bigger with each new day, each year. And it's important to realize where you are. That is so important. Right now, I am in Silicon Valley with my family. 
and we have built an incredible thriving business. We have had our largest year yet. I never dreamed of earning what we're earning until I started this journey. It still makes me giddy. I'm so proud. I love that we can make income and impact. And the best part is that it doesn't have to stay with us. That's where we are right now, helping the people in our lives get there. And that is purpose. It is so fun to watch people eliminate debt, go for debt free, get in the best shape of their lives, mentally, emotionally, physically, that not all days are awesome. Life isn't smooth all the time, but they've acquired these skills, this knowledge, this mindset, this lifestyle to help them through it. It's really powerful. That's where we are right now. We are a full-time family and one of the most expensive places in the United States of America. We're doing it. We have a beautiful dog, a beautiful daughter. Our marriage has grown so much in this pandemic. We are just feeling good in the midst of hard times. We lean on our savior. That's where we are. Where are we going? Oh yeah, where are we going? We have some really big goals for ourselves and our business. And we continue to think about the kind of marriage we want in the future, the kind of parents we want to be. What does our life look like? Where are we traveling? Where are we going? What things are we doing? What are we experiencing? What moments are we living? How are we being intentional? How are we growing? What does our business look like? Oh, it's super exciting. Now, when you are about to build your vision board, I think it's important to reflect on what went well in 2020. What went well? We hit a really big goal. We had the biggest year we've ever had. And we really enjoyed being a family, a full-time family this year. For you, what went well? Did you lose 10 pounds? Did you stay committed to your journey? Did you course correct when it got hard? Did you continue to show up when something hard happened? Did you get a raise? Did you quit your job that you have dreaded and just took, you took the leap? Did you move closer to family? Did you move somewhere else? Think about it. What went well in 2020? You got to spend more time with the people you love in your house. I think for us, what went well in 2020 is that we have FaceTimed our parents every single day. Actually, not even just in 2020, legitimately every day, unless we've all been together. Every day of Faye's life, we have FaceTimed our parents. We are so grateful for that every single day. What went well? And then I want you to think about what was the challenge for you in 2020? Obviously, we're in the midst of a pandemic. That's hard. Maybe your job security doesn't feel so secure. Maybe you got let go, furloughed. Maybe you got into more debt than you wanted to. Maybe you had to get a new car. Maybe something unexpected happened. What was a challenge for you? Maybe your depression or your anxiety creeped more in and it has gotten in your way. You feel overwhelmed, so it's hard to want to do things. Let's acknowledge that because life is 50-50. It's 50% awesome and thrilling and amazing, incredible, inspiring, and then it's hard and it sucks. It can get dark. It can feel lonely. Isolating, maybe. Unexpected heartbreak. Painful. It's 50-50. Now, as you're getting ready to dream up your dreams and create your vision board, I think it's also important, this exercise that I did with my team, is to think about potential obstacles that will be thrown in your way. There might be job loss, a death in the family, a loved one hurting. That can really mess with you of wanting to show up for your vision and your dreams. Maybe you get rejected 
Maybe you're about to start a business and you feel like it just flopped. Maybe an obstacle is the fear of judgment or the fear of failure or the fear of not being successful or the fear of no one catching that vision. That is real. Maybe an obstacle is that you hit a really big goal and you don't ask yourself what's next. Maybe you let off the gas after you did a big push. Those are real potential obstacles. Maybe for you, you're in business and people quit. That's happened to me many times, more times than I can count. But I got emotionally connected to my vision and not the lack and slack or dreams of other people. I didn't let that get in the way of where I knew I was going. Obstacles will come, but don't let them become bigger than what they need to be. Obstacles are meant to shape us, teach us, make us better, more resilient, more thoughtful. And then when you experience those obstacles and you move through them, they don't seem like obstacles in the future. It's really powerful. So as you create your vision board, so my team is doing this. We're all making visual dream boards, vision boards, so you can do it online. I love using Canva. I like making mine digital. You could make one on a cork board you can get paper and use magazines and put all these pictures on them and words and all the things of how you want to feel and how you want to live whether it's intentionally or patience right for me I like to make a digital version I also like crafting my vision board based on the roles of my life a mentor told me that we should have five to six roles in life if we have 12 roles, we can't, we cannot stretch that way and be good in all of them. But five to six is something we can truly maintain. So for me, what that might look like is a role in my life is a wife. A role in my life is a CEO. A role in my life is being a mom. A role in my life is being a mentor. So these roles, what I do with them is I set three goals based on my roles. So with the role of a CEO, my goal is to make more than $250,000. A goal that I have for my marriage is to do a marriage retreat. We did that this year and it was so incredible. It might be to continue to invest and show up in our marriage life group, right? For a mom. My goal will be to enroll Faye into some activities and be there, present with her in those activities, whether it's a music class or regardless if it's online or in person. Maybe it's library time or art time, whatever it is. I would really love that. So I'm intentional about setting goals around the roles of my life. And I also really love writing words down for those roles, adjectives. So I want to be a patient wife. I want to be a present mom. I want to be a direct leader. I want to be a committed CEO. So I use these words to remind myself of that's how I want to show up in those roles. So friend, it's time. It's time to create your vision for the next 12 months of 2021. Listen, I've made dream boards and vision boards over the past almost seven years, and I haven't always hit them when I said, but as I looked back and reflected on my dream boards, I have hit most of those goals. Maybe a role in there too is you can put it financial, right? So you want to pay off all debt, or you want to save this amount of money in your savings, or in, and to get an investment property or whatever. I just look back at when I first started and how simple my goals were, and now I look back like easy. You know, they weren't really that far out of my reach. And then over time, I've learned to get braver with the goals that I'm setting, more intentional, ones that when your alarm goes off, that's what I think about when I get out of bed so I don't hit snooze. It keeps me more committed. Three words that would describe me, and maybe this is what you write down on your vision board, are the words that describe you in 2021. And for me, it's constant committed and consistent. 
Those are the words I really love having in my life. Please screenshot this, upload it, tag me at Julianne Condia. I'm just so excited for you, friend. I love that you're here and I love that you dream big and I love that you see more for your life. It's less about the time and it's more about your belief. Instead of trying to put more time into your dreams, put more belief into them and then just chip away at it every single day. I know that our financial goal it's going to require me to to move my body every day, to read personal development, right? <laughs> to be a direct leader, like all the things. And so when I write out my vision, it's a lot easier to show up for myself because I'm emotionally connected to that than any fear, any rejection, any obstacle. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it so much. If you could rate and review Rewritten, I'd be so grateful. All right, friend, until next time. 